Here he pursed up his lips and looked so solemn and grand that Alice could hardly help laughing. If I did fall, he went on, the king has promised me. Ah, you may turn pale if you like. You didn't think I was going to say that, did you? The king has promised me, with his very own mouth, to. to. to send all his horses and all his men, Alice interrupted rather unwisely. Now I declare that's too bad, Humpty Dumpty cried, breaking into a sudden passion. You've been listening at doors and behind trees and down chimneys, or you couldn't have known it. I haven't indeed, Alice said very gently. It's in a book. Ah, well, they may write such things in a book, Humpty Dumpty said in a calmer tone. That's what you call a history of England, that is. Now, take a good look at me. I'm one that has spoken to a king, I am. Mayhap you'll never see such another. And to show you I'm not proud, you may shake hands with me. And he grinned almost from ear to ear as he leant forwards, and as nearly as possible fell off the wall in doing so, and offered Alice his hand. She watched him a little anxiously as she took it. If he smiled much more, the ends of his mouth might meet behind, she thought, and then I don't know what would happen to his head. I'm afraid it would come off. Yes, all his horses and all his men, Humpty Dumpty went on. They'd pick me up again in a minute, they would. However, this conversation is going on a little too fast. Let's go back to the last remark but one. I'm afraid I can't quite remember it, Alice said very politely. In that case, we start afresh, said Humpty Dumpty. And it's my turn to choose a subject. <laughs>